Welcome. Some of you are, are volunteers here in New Mayapur. We apologize if some of the words you do not follow, but we hope you can follow something. And welcome all devotees on this auspicious day, which we are. Looks like a rainy day. But, uh, what can we say? On this day, we are hopeful. We will not say certain, but we are hopeful that the Srimad Bhagavatam in French will be arriving here in the lorry, having been printed for the first time in 37 years. And there are only 700 sets coming today. <laughs> it sounds a lot, but not really very many in one sense. There are more than 700 people living in France. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take families. There's probably about 20 million families living in France, maybe. One set per family. <laughs> Would that be very nice? Plus, of course, on top of that, every institution, library, and whatever, <laughs> hotel, whatever, may not be possible at this moment, but it would be nice, maybe a million there. But at least we can start with what we have. 700 sets. As Naratam, Shamananda and Srinivas took the original first, they were the first book distribution party in our Gaudiya line, our devotional line. They travel by bullock cart, walking with the books on a bullock cart. And we may have vehicles now, motor vehicles, Although you may not be able to get any petrol to make them work. <laughs> um, but the principle is the same to give this spiritual knowledge to people in general. And we're hopeful. Also, Vaishnav song books should be arriving in French. The equivalent of this book, but in French. And many, many, many other books. Um, and altogether, it's been a long haul, and there's been one challenge after another trying to bring this to fruition or to reality. We've been 
always, of course, have been doing most of the work, but we've been working on it now for at least 18 months, maybe 20 months, I think 20, to try to um, uh, have this momentous occasion today, we hope today, whenever it is, momentous, extraordinary event, we, we would, although, even though it's raining, uh, maybe this is because of the great sacrifice, rain is coming, um, Kirtan will be offering the Bhagavatams to the deities, not all of them, <laughs> bring all 700 sets in here one by one and offer them to the deity. Is that right, Diana Taipo? <laughs> we'll carry each one. On, on the altar. On the altar. Seven, the seven, we'll bring 700 sets in here. No, but one or two or whatever we'll bring in here. Krishna, if we will. But you remember, we hope there will be a good photographer present to take nice pictures. For It's like a deity of Krishna, form of Krishna, arriving here in the most important form, Srimad Bhagavatam. In literature form, Srimad Bhagavatam is by the author of the Vedas, the ancient Vedic literature, describes Srimad Bhagavatam as the cream, the essence of all the Vedas, the ripened fruit of all the Vedas. It's the purpose of all the Vedas. Um, so it's been a long haul, and even yesterday, it's almost like when Srila Prabhupada was trying to preach Krishna consciousness, how many obstacles were there, one after the next. When he tried to print his books, or travel to the West, or purchase the Juhu property in, in Bombay, battle. So many obstacles were there. It increases the appreciation, it increases the, the sacrifice the ple pleasure of the Lord. So even yesterday another obstacle came along, last hurdle, maybe not the last, <laughs> the most recent, the most recent hurdle. For some reason, Lakshmi Priyu handles the shipments, the books in Belgium, they came into Belgium, in the warehouse there. She completely miscalculated the weight of the books whether this is anything to do with why we haven't been in a good vehicle, I never asked her, it was, wasn't the thing to ask. We had already calculated the weight of the books, which is a 17 to 18 tons of books. You know what a ton is? You know what a t Do you have this term in France, ton? Yes, 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 yes. 17, 18 tons. That's what, a lot of books, huh? <laughs> A lot of weight, 17, 18,000 kilos or something. <laughs> she miscalculated. I think she just calculated the weight of the Bhagavatams and forgot all the other books that were there and ordered a 12 ton lorry. Oh, yeah. Instead of a 20 ton one. So, arriving at the warehouse, it was obvious that there's no way this lorry could. Take this 31 pallets of books. <laughs> and it was, I don't know, it must have been pretty chaotic, I'd imagine. I mean, we'd already calculated, but she told them nine, ki nine tons. Doesn't do it. She just can't work out how this happened. And, uh, they had to make a last-minute adjustment. I won't tell you what it is, but they had to make a last-minute adjustment to try to get them here. So let's see if that last-minute adjustment <laughs> Thank you. worked out. Or worked out. Everything is in the hands of Krishna, oh God. We are just trying to render service. So anyway, it's related to, of course, the Chirabhav of Naratam Das in their songbook, the philosophy which he shared with the world. Naratam Das was 
very special inner light. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had taken sannyas, he traveled back to Bengal with the intention of going to Vrindavan. And he stopped particularly uh, to see two of his eternal associates who had not yet manifest their themselves really. Rupa and Sanatan, a place called Ram Kali, which happens to be near the shore of the river Padma, which is a huge river. It is a part of the Ganga. The Ganga splits up in many ways, but the Padma is more than just the Ganga. It also includes the Brahmacirta River, the Brahmaputra River. Um, and it's the biggest branch, actually, of the Holy Ganga. Um, but it's biggest because it mixes with other rivers coming down from the Himalayas. A very wide river, sometimes it's just like 10 miles wide or more in the in rainy season. So when he reached that place, Lord Chaitanya started to roar loudly, Nara! Naratam, Naratam, Nara, Nara. Nobody knew what on earth was going on. Naratam literally means the greatest personality. Nobody knew. They crossed over the river. On the other side of the river was nearby was a village called Keturi. And there they had roaring kirtan. So ro uproarious kirtan and Lord Chaitanya was in, everyone was in complete ecstasy. We're going to cut a long story short. Lord Chaitanya then went, they all went into the river uh, Padma to take their bath and the river when they went in overflowed its banks. Now that doesn't usually happen when even a thousand people take their bath in the mighty river. But in this case, it did, because the, the river became overwhelmed with ecstasy. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu deposited his complete ecstasy, his prema, not just not his ecstasy, his prema, his love of God. He deposited it right there in the river Padma. The Padma River personified Padma Vati appeared before him. He said. That I'm depositing my prema now in your waters. I want you to give this prema to a great personality who will appear in this village, Keturi, in the future, within our lifetimes. Padma Bhati was asking, how will I recognize that personality? Lord Chaitanya said that when the same thing happens, that your banks will overflow and you will feel in an unending ecstasy you will know that that is this person he is my eternal associate and how he will be the personification of kirtan praying lord chaitanya told nityananda prabhu you have to act as his instructing guru time went on of course lord chaitanya we turned after some time to Jagannath Puri. Nityananda was sent to Bengal to preach. And sure enough, in that place, Keturi, there was one king called Krishnanand. He was a great Vaishnava, but he was basically speaking, um, I think caste was he Kayasta? I can't remember. He was of a low caste, according to the local system of caste system but still he was a great personality and he was a king he was fabulously rich and they were desiring a son he and his wife and sure enough on an auspicious occasion his wife gave birth to a child whom they named Naratam 
and he was um, all the symptoms of what's called a mukta purush. Mukta purush means one who is a liberated soul. We may be born with, you know, tiny eyes and weird noses and ears going in strange directions and feet of all different shapes and sizes due to our various karmas. But uh, Mukta Purusha has all the beautiful symptoms of an ever liberated soul. Long arms, lotus like eyes, broad chest, deep navel, perfectly shaped. Forms also, very beautiful form. But he was very darkish in complexion, I guess his family was. Darkish in complexion. And everyone could see that this child was extraordinary, fortunate. When they gave the, is traditional in India, even till today, and even we do. When the child reaches a certain age, depending, um, then the child is given his first grains, usually sweet rice. Huh? And so they brought grains for the child, first grains, usually around about six months. Now it's time to just look the other way, wouldn't even look at it. The spoon's there and he just keeps turning his head away from it. Everyone was, became a little disturbed, what's going on here? He's not interested. Then one saintly person came and realized, had a realization why the child was gone. The grains were not offered. <laughs> and he immediately brought some offered, some prasadam. Immediately Naratam, very enthusiastically, respected the prasad. He was, a, was known as a Shrutidara, as a child. Shrutidara means photogenic memory, just like most of you have. You're all young, you must be able to remember every word I've said so far. <laughs> Correct? Master Nanda? Yes, agrees. Do you remember what I just said? <laughs> just now, yes. You sure? I can't remember what you just said. You know, this Kali Yuga memories are so short. <laughs> but we do find sometimes persons with this um, quality. Brilliant scholar in Sanskrit, but his main um, interest was to hear Krishna Kata from local sadhus. He would sit listening for hours on end to the glorification of Krishna. Not so interested in his studies. Those days studies were more philosophy. philosophy. They didn't study engineering and IT and in all these things. But they studied, you know, culture, spiritual um, knowledge, types of grammar and so on, language. And uh, he was a brilliant uh, scholar like that. Um, he, one day, he had a dream. He was a young teenager. And Nityananda Prabhu appeared in his dream and said, tomorrow morning, early, early, you must go down to the river Padma and take your bath. I explained a little bit about what would happen. He woke up immediately. He went to the river Padma. took his bath and sure enough the waters of the Padma overflowed. Padma started to feel un, un, unending bliss, ecstasy, immediately realizing this was that personality. She bestowed or she gave that prema which she'd been holding to Narottam, Lord Chaitanya's personal kirtan prema. 
see Naratam. Naratam, on coming out of the river, was overwhelmed in ecstasy. His body had changed color. That frame of being non-different is the effulgence of Lord Chaitanya. Golden color. Naratam's form turned golden. Pure gold. No longer darkish. No one could recognize him. He was rolling on the ground, roaring the names of... He'd heard of Lord Chaitanya. He'd become madly attracted to associate with Lord Chaitanya. But now it became unbearable. His family didn't know where he was. They sent guards and servants, search, uh, search parties in different directions, and then they found him on the bank of Padma, rolling in ecstasy, crying out the names of Krishna. Bringing him back home, he was never the same again. Naratam explained somewhat what happened, but from then on, he had zero interest in anything but pure devotion and association with Chaitanya Mahal. His father, seeing the, the predicament, dangerous predicament, he was the only son, the heir to the kingdom, what to do? Our son has gone crazy. He's a madman. We have to tie him down. Try and then to arrange naturally a marriage for their son. Naratam had no interest whatsoever. The, and he, he was so... He became quite famous for his, let's say, devotional excesses. Even the local Muslim king on hearing about this extraordinary child, wanted to see him, so he summoned Naratam to his court. Quite, uh, and you could say extraordinary also. But there was no choice. King Krishnananda had to abide, otherwise he would have lost his head. So uh, the Naratam was taken to the court of the Nawab, the Muslim ruler, and realizing now is a chance. A chance to escape the, the bondage of, you could say, from a transcendental perspective and from an ordinary perspective, it's a little different. But from a transcendental perspective, the bondage of family life. So he uh, found a way. At one point of time, the guards were not watching. He sneaked out and slipped out through some door somewhere at the Nawab's palace into the forest, into the jungle, alone, young teenage boy, pampered, he was the son of a king, pampered, he made his way through the jungles, fasting day after day, it was, you could say, words that the guards would catch up with him once they realized what had happened. Days passed, days passed, he was exhausted going through the jungle, no food. One night he was so exhausted he just collapsed. In his dream, or his vision, the Lord appeared to him, urging him on to Vrindavan to take shelter of Lokanath Goswami, one great devotee who was residing in Vrindavan. And also, the next morning, a Brahmana boy had appeared carrying a pot of milk delivering that milk to Narottam and then disappearing. The Brahmin was very fortune, also golden coloured. Narottam took that milk and felt completely rejuvenated, realising that it was none other than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who had brought this milk for his sustenance. Milk is a, is a very, let's say, significant feature in the life of Narottam. Mm. And he proceeded, he, even he was um, super, he was, um, what's the word I can't think, one of the parties searching for him caught up with him somewhere on the journey. But by his purity, by his, you could say, very uh, expert not expert from the logic point of view, just from the sheer fact that his heart was so sold out, 
sold out to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who by this time had left the world a long time ago. But um, still his heart was sold out and determined on the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to go to Vrindavan. He sold his heart, so there was nothing else he could do. As a girl who sold his heart to a boy, he cannot withdraw it. Anyway, he convinced them by his arguments and his fealty. He went on to Vrindavan and eventually he reached Sri Vrindavan Dham. And arriving in Vrindavan, he heard, or at least on the entering into Mathura, the city next to Vrindavan, he heard that Rupa Goswami Sanatana Goswami Ragana, Bhatta Goswami Parameshwar, and so many other great devotees have left the world. He was going there for the taking shelter of them. But they left the world. He was devastated. But then again, the Lord appeared to him. Oh, actually, no, Rupa, I think this time Rupa Goswami, and his, they all appeared before him saying, Don't become disheartened, proceed forward. You've been told to take initiation from Lokanath Goswami and to take shelter of the Siksha, the instruction of Jesus, their younger nephew. So he did, he went forward to Vrindavan, to the Radhago Vinda Mandir, the temple of Rupa Goswami and Raghunath Bhat Goswami. And there he was swooning in ecstasy when he took the darshan of Radha Govinda. Jiva Goswami, on hearing of the arrival of this uh, great devotee, who was also aware, Rupa told him that this great personality will be arriving soon. So he then ran to the temple and uh, to see Lokanath and there of course Loka, uh, to not see Lokanath, to see um, Narodham uh, ecstatic, ecstatic interactions. And Narodham became very dear to all the devotees in Vrindavan. When he saw Lokanath Goswami, he immediately recognized him as his eternal guru, his Diksha guru. He took shelter of Lokanath Goswami, but Lokanath had made a vow that he would never initiate anyone. Mm. Neither Jiva, and Jiva Goswami never initiated anyone either. No one. And Lokanath had made the vow, but he'd also received, Lord Chaitanya had sent Lokanath to Vrindavan. And he told him that in the future he has to initiate one disciple named Narada. But he was determined not to initiate anyone. So Lokanath Goswami was really testing, you could say, Narada. Narada was serving him in every way possible, menially, even to the point of cleaning up the stool area and everything he would do, even without his Guru's knowledge. And he begged and begged. After some time he asked for shelter. And Lokanath basically laughed. You don't know that you have to be tested. Disciple, at least one year, has to chant constantly the holy names. Narutam began chanting non-stop the holy names for a whole year and again asked. And... Uh, said, what do you need? Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is your guru already. You do not need any other. But he was determined. There was a fight of determination going on. And uh, Narutam was determined. His life had no meaning otherwise. He tried everything he could. After another year, more or less, had passed by, still Lokanath was not willing. That one night, Lokanath had my, uh, Swami had a dream. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. What are you doing? I told you, you must give initiation to this one devotee now. Why are you not doing this? He was chastising him. So the next morning, Lokanath Goswami woke and immediately realized he had to do it. Making all preparations on auspicious occasion, he gave initiation to Lokanath Goswami, uh, to Narutanda and pointed him to Jiva Goswami for further education.
but he also vowed this will be my only disciple. So he then stayed in the shelter of Jiva Goswami. Okay, what I'm going to do is finish and carry on tonight after Yamadara. Is that okay? Is that okay? Because there won't be enough time. And we all have things to do. So we'll finish there. He's taken shelter of Jiva Goswami in his school of philosophy, of devotion. And we'll take the rest of the story later. Srila Narasam Das Thakur Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gora Premanan. So please be ready. We may or may not need. Uh, you may definitely join when the lorry comes, I hope. We don't know exactly what will happen. Let's see. We'd like to have a kirtan to welcome the Lord to New Mayapur in this sublime form. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I'd like to thank you very, very much, Yolanda Goswami Maharaj, because I don't know if you remember, he mentioned it, but after 37 years, mm. I know Gershon was moved because I spent 50 years here. So now, finally, by how he worked so hard. Not to, much, really. Bring, yes. I would tell us, I'd like to tell a story a little bit, about, but I'll tell it. Is, you know? huh? it. We have to thank all the devotees in the BBT. <laughs> Narayani. Who, yes. You know Narayani, yeah, yeah. elder French-Canadian devotee who has been working on the French publications for a long time. Mm. She's not a young girl. Mm. She's also 60. Yeah. And we had a big dilemma. Mm. I, actually, I should write a little booklet about this. Mm. A big dilemma because um, there was, in those days when they were printed, there was no, nothing was on computer. No. Either everything had to be totally retyped into the computer yeah. and checked through 101 times. Mm. That's a huge job. Or we had to somehow or another try to reproduce what we already had from those days. Mm. The BBT fortunately had kept the films. In those mm. days everything was filmed. Yes. It wasn't typed into computers. It was typed, mm. but not then. It was then filmed. And from those films you made these plates which you printed, offset printing. And uh, they still had all these films from 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we decided between us all that we would go for the film. Mm -hmm. It was quicker. But it, COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So when did COVID hit? Two years ago? Yeah. More than two. Yeah, it's two. So this might have been more than that. 20 months ago, I don't know, but it was during the COVID period. And the whole BBT was hit with COVID. For, oh. And then there was this whole thing, the whole uh, big fire nearby, and oh. a huge um, toxic waste burst oh, yes. into flames. Yes. The whole area was covered in toxic for about two that. weeks. They couldn't get near the BBT. Yeah. There was one thing after the next took place. The films they found were covered in this tape, this masking tape, which was, no, okay when you put it on, but after 37 years it leaves a mark. They had to clean, like literally wash every oh, single yeah. film. Yeah. There were only, I think, 25,000 films, something like that. Wow. Not many. A big film place like this. It was like a whole team of devotees in Stockholm cleaning these films for months and months and months oh. and months. Huge task. Because we couldn't afford, I mean, we were, everything was, we, they had no money to print the book. Mm -hmm. We then had to, to, if, if, to print it, they could only afford about 500 copies. Wow. So we had to raise the money to print the rest of the book. So then another marathon ensued. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of that managed last year. Mm -hmm. And then all, then all kinds of things, what with COVID, then the war in Ukraine, the whole supply of paper was turned off. Oh. <laughs> and even the blueprint paper was not available for months. And it went on and on and on. But eventually, I think about three months ago, they managed to finally print. 
and uh, now they're <laughs> somewhere. As I said yesterday, don't count your chickens till they hatch. <laughs> <laughs> they may be there in the in the womb, but they haven't come out yet. So, you know, anything is possible. You know that. You know. We don't want to be over optimistic, but we don't want to be over. De- we don't want to be dependent on Krishna. And whatever Krishna wills, we have to live with it. The no- the ghost farmer's literatures were stolen on the way. So. <laughs> aye, aye. We hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> they did eventually recover them, by the way. Sure, Grantaraj, Srimad Bhagavatam, Ki Jai, Prabhupada Ki Jai. Now the, the real fun begins, we hope. Well, we'll say, we'll say that later tonight. By tonight, we may not. We hope we know. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna, we'd like to thank Diana Thai Prabhu for inspiring the devotees here in book distribution. Hey, it can't be that. It's got to be untangled from here. It's a big mess.